Mr. Mondi, thank you very much for your time. Firstly, I want to start with the, the exponential uh, increase in infection rates in South Africa. As I speak to you this morning, we're standing at 274, which is extremely worrying. Is the current state of a national disaster adequate to curb the spread of this virus? Uh, not at all. Remember, many South Africans... Uh, believe that, you know, in their behavior and their daily routine, they can be able to squeeze as much as possible, despite uh, South Africa expecting them to social distance. Mm. So I think we need much stronger measures. We need a state of emergency. Uh, but that state of emergency must be coupled with a lot of other intervention, particularly around um, supporting those that are vulnerable, uh, particularly young children who are not able to go to school, who are very much dependent on nutrition that's supplied in various schools. And in your view, uh, the president, is it fair to say that he probably at this time might have his hand forced to implement even stricter measures? I want to talk to you about those stricter measures in your view. We're currently in the national state of disaster. Could this quickly escalate into a, a state of emergency? It's got to escalate to that. We need uh, the army to start patrolling, uh, supporting you know our South African police services as well as local uh, metro police in various metros in South Africa, making sure that everyone is indoors unless there's a reason for why someone should not be indoors. Yeah. Of course, essential services should continue. We want to see pharmacies and retail um, uh, shops uh, as well as other emergency type of shops. That supply, uh, that supply agent supply that are medical uh, continue to being open. I think more than that, we need to ensure that at least incomes are protected. And that requires a, a much larger package, which I hope that when the president does talk to us, mm -hmm. he will come with that package that ensures that workers um, who, are, uh, who have to stay at home because of short distancing and uh, are protected, their incomes are protected. But more important also, think innovatively about those that are not employed, that are dependent on other family members, whether is there any way where we can demand and ask the state to come to the party as an employer for last resort mm. to provide some income from those families. Uh, this weekend, you wrote an article suggesting that uh, this may be the time uh, for the country to promote domestic private investment. What makes this a conducive time and moment for this to happen, and how do we achieve it, more importantly? Uh, firstly, uh, what you've seen in Europe, America, is a huge um, quantitative easing uh, driven by central banks, um, as well as the fiscal uh, policy by the state injecting a huge uh, amount of money into the system. Mm -hmm. Typically, our experiences as emerging markets and developing economies, when there's been uh, quantitative easing in Europe and America, uh, we've seen currencies of emerging markets strengthening accordingly as uh, investors in Europe and, and America chase the yield mm -hmm. to try and maximize returns. This time is different. We've seen our currencies across all commodity major markets, Australia, South Africa, Chile, and others, mm -hmm. weakening drastically, indicating that there might be some delinking between us and the rest of, um, uh, of uh, developed countries. Therefore, meaning that we're being left on our own. Being left on our own, it means that South Africans might put uh, their mouth in their po where their pocket is. That is, we need to dig deep in our pockets and contribute to reinvigorating our economy, to really use this window uh, to uh, adopt policies that are inward looking, that support um, particularly areas that are labor intensive, mm. that you can create jobs, sustain um, livelihoods, and in the process rekindle our economy, which at the moment uh, is really struggling, not because of the COVID-19, but because of the past mismanagement we've seen in the past 10 years. Mm. We've seen the president and uh, his ability to, uh, I guess, um, put back into action his negotiation skills that he's renowned for. He's uh, brought together all these social partners, including business, by the way. So uh, how possible is this? And perhaps one of the questions to ask of you, uh, Lumgilamondi, is what's the biggest risk 
to this economy um, if the COVID-19 is not contained? It is the death of millions of South Africans, of the undermining of, of our productive capacity because we've lost critical skills and critical human beings that could be active in the economy and help us address our historical challenges of poverty, inequality, as well as, as, well as unemployment. So that's the catastrophe that we're looking at. So this intervention that includes a state of emergency and really a number of our security services are supporting the efforts of making sure that everyone stays at home except the emergency workers and the essential service workers. And the package that I've talked about will ensure that at least as we save lives, we're also ensuring that living standards don't completely collapse, mm -hmm. that when you defeat this virus, we're able to return to a growth path that is informed by very strong investment that we've put that the president is going to announce on infrastructure, on ensuring that small business enterprises are sustained, but also the financial sector uh, extends credit across many areas, not only on financial products, which, the, which is what they've been doing in the past 10 years, because returns have been better than the productive sector of the Lemgile economy. Mundi, thank you very much for your time. Lemgile Mondi is a senior thank lecturer you. at the School of Economics and Finance at Wits University. He's also an economist.